But the fact that it's simple. Now, I just want to be clear here. This is not a theory. I don't have a theory that anxiety is a problem in the mind. When we saw that it wasn't the mind, it was in the body. We started to develop our process based around just the body. And we started running data and, and tests and working with test cases. And we saw something very distinct that the fear and anxiety levels of myself and the other test cases started to go down, but stay down. That's the key thing. Stay down, which meant that we were in the right place. We were in the actual right root cause location. Welcome back to the Intelligent Conversations podcast. Today, I have the honor to learn from Daniel Packard. Daniel is a graduate from UC Berkeley in mechanical engineering. He's an anxiety solution pioneer whose research company engineered the world's only permanent anxiety solution program where you only have to pay at the end of the program once you have clear, measurable results. Daniel believes that results speak louder than theories and anything else that has been offered to much of the self-development and psychology field. Daniel was great in this episode. He had a lot of great information to share. You can tell just in the way he talks, how passionate he is and how much he wants to help people get over struggles. And in this case, anxieties and fears that they may have. I'm not going to spoil any of the rest of the show, but Without further ado, let's welcome Daniel Packard to the show. So I guess kind of on that, how'd you get started with this? Uh, I mean, I kind of got a brush up, but can you kind of like give me a brief synopsis of how you got started with your company and helping people with like anxiety and things like that? Of course, just for my own knowledge, I'm assuming, is this part of the show now? Yeah, no, we just... we're, we're live. So, oh, okay. I like it. Natural. Yeah, no, I prefer the natural. It's it's better. Absolutely. Well, you know what I and my company is about is we spent eight years to uh, understand fear and anxiety and to develop a process that solves it so that people can be free of it. That's what we do. That's unique and valuable. Um, and how we got there was, you know, it's the typical story of, you know, you learn something and then you want to share it with people. You know, it's a, it's a timeless tale. And for me, it was um, in my 20s, I fell in love with a woman and was not equipped, didn't understand how to be in a relationship or standards or boundaries or any of that stuff. And... Uh, even though we loved each other, the relationship turned really unhealthy very quickly. Mm. And later I found out I was being verbally and emotionally abused at times, but I was too insecure and codependent to leave. And so I'm, I made a mistake. I know none of your audience would ever make, but I stayed, I stayed in a relationship way, way past its expiration <laughs> date. I stayed in just me, just me. I know it's just me. And it happens, right? A lot of other yes. people struggle. Yeah. Yeah. You think, oh, red flag. Oh, but they love me. And maybe there's no more red flags. Oh, there's another red flag. Well, maybe that's probably it. Just two. Oh, there's three. Well, no, you know, and then yeah. you just, then you're just knee deep in red flags and you get used to it. And anyway, uh, when the relationship was finally over, about two weeks after it ended, um, I was hanging out with a friend and they interrupted me. And instead of just noticing it, my whole body was filled with just basically terror. And I thought, uh Oh, that's, that's not a good sign. I, <laughs> and then the next day I was going to hang out with a friend and they were running about five minutes late. And all of a sudden I just felt my chest tighten up and I felt like I was going to die with fear. And I thought, Oh gosh, that's, that's not a good trend. The trend is not my friend. So I, you know, booked a consultation with a therapist and they said, yeah, basically the, the accumulation of that relationship and the unhealth has left you basically with complex PTSD and crippling anxiety. And I went, okay, well that makes, that makes sense. And then, you know, 
as many of your listeners have done, if they're feeling anxious, panic attacks, fear, fear of rejection, fear of failure, um, you know, we see this fear and this worry and this stress, these emotional things that are holding us back. And I did what most people do. I went looking for help and I went to therapists and psychologists and doctors and teachers and, you know, lived in an ashram, had a spiritual teacher. Uh, I did all the modalities of EMDR and EFT and CGT and MOUSE. And, you know, I did all the letters. I also went to all the experts that had letters at the end of their name. And what I wanted was the fear and anxiety to go away. That's what everybody wants, but it didn't go away. All I learned was tips and tools and insights to manage it. Mm-hmm. which is better than nothing, you know, yeah, it's better no, than nothing it, for sure. But I still had it. I, I, I couldn't be confident. Uh, I wasn't doing what I loved. Uh, I was exhausted cause you're not supposed to be afraid most of the day. And a lot of my life was just based around managing and avoiding things that made me anxious instead of just being an open hearted. Plus you can't be fully present. Your focus is affected. And then my friends and family didn't want to be around me and they all walked away, which just left me feeling even more broken and alone. And, and I just remember I was living in a little house in Mexico on the coast, on the Oaxacan coast in the fetal position filled with terror, but more importantly, just feeling hopeless because nothing the experts taught me was getting rid of this. So I was losing hope. And I felt trapped and I felt so alone. And I kind of just had this sort of spiritual rock bottom moment where I, I just sort of looked up to the sky and God universe, big wisdom, whoever the heck is up there pulling the strings. And I just said like, what, what do you want from me? Like, I get this as a test. I'm here to pass the test, but you, you got to help a brother out. I've just spent 10 years. What do you, what do you need from me? And I'll do it. But I, I feel even more trapped and more confused because I don't even know what this is or how to get rid of it. Mm-hmm. And I had this sort of, I don't know, an epiphany, a sort of clarity. And I remembered two experiences from my childhood. And those two experiences were that my dad was a, a scientist and he was also an, an inventor and he used to invent things. And he told me when I was a kid, he said, you know what, Daniel, if something in this world isn't working, you know, invent something better. You can, you can make something better. And I I was always, I always just loved the idea of that, of inventing. And I, and he also said something to me, which stuck with me is he said, you know, Daniel, anybody can have an, can have a theory or an idea, but what matters is results. Who's getting results. You trust the person that gets results. And also he said, results matter. That's what makes people's lives better. Not theories, results. I like that. Uh, I like that thought of results first. I mean, your dad's a wise, wise, wise person. And that's actually something I've been thinking about too. It's like, like anyone can come up with theories or ideas and things like that. And then, you know, speaking about them and talking about them, right. That's a little harder to do, but it's still like most everyone can kind of get a rough idea of, uh, and explain their ideas to other people. But then when it comes to actual, the actual action, you know, and putting that uh, blood, sweat, and tears into something. That's the hard part, right? And that's where the few really come out on top. Well, you're absolutely right. And, and, and the thing is, is that we know this. We know theories are nice, ideas are nice, tips are nice. But that's not the same as something really working. It's true. And we know this, you know, if you're going to build a house, if you want to do anything in the physical world, If someone just says, oh, I, you know, if you go to a mechanic and a mechanic says, hey, let me give you some insights about your car. You don't go, oh, thanks for the insights. You go, no, well, that's great, but could you just fix the car? (laughs) Exactly. But when it comes to mental health, what's sold is insights, theories, perspectives. It's true. Which are better than nothing. But it's not the same as results. And my awareness was, oh, my God, I spent $100,000 for insights. 
Now, it's not nothing, but an insight is not a solution. And why are we paying all this money for insights? Now, if insights lead to solutions and results, great. But I saw that they don't. And I did some research. A trillion dollars a year gets spent between therapy, psychology, personal development. And it doesn't get people permanent results for anxiety, depression, anxiety is on the rise, depression is on the rise, suicide is the num is I think it's the number three killer of teens in the U.S. Like this, I call it the improvement industrial complex. They're selling ideas and concepts and insights, but they're not getting results. And that's not the problem, Josh. The problem is nobody has a problem with it. I spent a hundred thousand dollars on retreats and insights and tips and tools. It didn't solve anything. And not once did I go, that's not a, that's not good because we've been so conditioned that that's all we're going to get. So what I saw was in so many areas of the world, we pay for results. Again, you take your car to a mechanic, you know, you don't pay for your car to say, Hey, let me, let me, let me, let me show you kind of what's going on with your car. And let me show you that the reason your car isn't working is because years ago, it's like, I don't, I don't need a history lesson, man. Just get my car working. But when it comes to mental health and happiness, we are just conditioned to tolerate this never ending learning. And I woke up and I went, wait a minute, I'm done learning. I need results because I'm in a lot of pain. The world's in a lot of pain. And I was trained in engineering school. I went to UC Berkeley mechanical engineering school because I loved inventing and making things that work. And I thought maybe, maybe I could engineer something that gets permanent results. I didn't know if I could. I just thought, man, I need this. The world needs this. And I started my own research company to see, could we create a process that was simple, basic, step by step and reverse engineer it such that if you work the steps, you would get permanent results. Either your fear and anxiety is gone or mostly gone. And it was a bit naive to try it. It was not, it was so naughty. It took eight years. It took over a million dollars in research and development. I gave up everything I was doing for eight years. Um, I worked with 3000 people on five continents. I, I lived and worked with monks in India. I worked with addicts in South Africa. Uh, it's all I did was trying to understand anxiety and fear in a simple mechanical solvable way to see if we could basically crack this thing and cure it. And I was one of the first test cases. Nine years ago, My I woke up one morning because I had been using our, our process that we'd been developing and, and I just, I felt calm and, and, and calm and safe. And I, I thought, oh, that's temporary. That There's no way, there's no way that's permanent. One week goes by, two weeks goes by. It's been nine years and I've just been chill as a cucumber no anxiety, no PTSD, no panic attacks, nothing. I feel some stress sometimes, but that's about it. And the big breakthrough wasn't that it worked for me because when it worked for me, my team said, oh, wow, we did it. And I went, no, man, we did it for me. That means it's possible. But the goal, you know, it was complicated for me to do. We didn't know what we were doing. It, it, so I said, we need, to, we need to, now that we know it's possible, we need to make this simple. We need to make it step-by-step and we need to make it accessible to people. We need an online program that anybody can do, make it affordable and have it be simple, step by step with guaranteed permanent results. And that's, that's our big achievement. And it's not because of any one particular tool or technique. It's a whole system that we spent years optimizing and testing to make sure that it gets, we don't want people trying this and failing and then feeling worse about themselves. We want to give people freedom from this, but also we want to make it simple and we want to get people results. Results matter. And because they matter, when we work with people, I'm just tired of this thing where people spend money and don't get permanent results. Like I'm so done with that. There's, there's thousands of people that will take your money, not deliver permanent results and not have a problem with it. I don't, I have a problem with it. So when, when we work with people, you don't pay at the beginning because we haven't helped you yet. You pay at the end when you have clear, measurable data and results that your fear and anxiety is either gone or significantly gone. And that's when you pay when we've delivered results because results matter. That's how you help people is results. And if we can't get your results, we're not taking your money because it's not right. It's, I mean, that kind of goes back to the, the mechanic, right. That you were talking about, right. If they go in and they fix, uh, 
let's say something's wrong with the, the transmission, right? And they fix it and it still doesn't, your car still doesn't work. You're not going to sit there and be like, oh, it's all right, right? And take a step back. You're going to say, no, like this didn't work. <laughs> like <laughs> fix it or like I'm gone, like I'm leaving. And that's that seems to be the approach you're kind of taking as well. It's the approach that we're taking because it's the right approach. You you know when someone you when you hire a gardener, they say I'm going to go do this or hire land. I'm going to do this, and when it's done, you pay me. I mean that's kind of the way things are done. You pay for the thing you want. It's just that we figured out that the mental health experts and the people that are trying to solve this, they're not really motivated to solve it. They're not equipped to solve it. And they're okay not solving it. And they've kind of convinced everybody it's okay not to solve it. So people aren't expecting it. And I'm trying to wake people up and say, hey, look, why keep money, spending money on something that doesn't solve it? I, I, I'm not here to dismiss or disparage therapists or psychologists or spiritual teachers. They're doing the best they can. But I'm waking people up to what I didn't know, which is this is a real problem. Start demanding res permanent results. And if they're not measuring results, maybe they're not getting them. And if nothing else, if what I'm saying, if you want permanent results or only pay when you get results, just know at least we're, we're here for you because it's just the right thing to do. And as an engineer, this is why we solved it. We wanted to solve it. Like as an engineer, you want to make things that work. It's very unsatisfying to like build something yeah. and then it doesn't work. I'm sure the Wright brothers, if they'd gotten half the way there and then they just had a plane that didn't fly, they wouldn't be like, that's awesome. No, it's not awesome. You want the thing to like work. It's this puzzle you want to solve. So we were passionate about solving this. But your average therapist or psychologist or spiritual teacher, they learn stuff from either a school or their guru. It's insights and tools and tips and then they pass it on and that's okay that that they're okay with that and that's fine if that's all you want to do but me i'm an engineer man permanent results freedom that to me that's satisfying that's how you help people freedom i like that i like that a lot and this is just a thought i had as you were talking and that's so you you mentioned like kind of like the right brothers and you want permanent results but i'd also argue that the planes come a long way, right? And we're continuously making like innovation, like uh, making it better. So I'm curious, does your process then, or whatever it may be, does that continually improve as well? Well, it's a great question um, because also we have to look at the word like works. You know, I I'm always looking, part of my interesting journey is now that we've innovated something much more effective and innovative, I can kind of look back in the industry that I was part of and participate and look back and go, huh, that's interesting. So the word help, even just the word help, you know, I'm getting help for my anxiety. I'm getting help for my fear. That word help kind of like the word love gets thrown around a lot, but it doesn't have a real clear definition. And so it's important to say like, what is, what is help? You know, I mean, every day I talk to people who want to work with us and I'll always ask them, you know, what have you done in the past? And this was last month, somebody reached out to me and they said, oh man, you know, uh, for the last seven years, I have this therapist and she's great. She's helped me so much. Um, my anxiety's less and my panic attacks are down from every day to every other day. Now I didn't say anything. It's not my job to comment on her therapist. Her therapist, she'd been with her therapist for seven years. She still has anxiety and she still has panic attacks every other day. No, it was, it was once a week. And that's not the problem. The problem is she said, wow, she really helped me and I have a great therapist. And I was like, uh, I didn't say this, but it's like, do you? Do you it's have true. a great therapist? And, and what's your definition of help? Now for her, something other than nothing was help. But for me, help. Okay, when you're drowning... You don't want a lifeguard to say, hey, can I help you manage your drowning? Can I make it so that you're, you know, no, you want to be, you want to be free of the problem. So our definition of help is that it's gone and it doesn't come back. Now to answer your question, the Wright brothers uh, were able to have flight and then they're improving. So yes, we didn't want to launch our program until we had a 90% success rate in six weeks, which is pretty incredible. But we're always trying to improve it because one, I'm an engineer. I, I want to make it better and better. Yeah. So even though 90% of people get results in six weeks, I'm always trying to figure out what about the other 10%? 
Um, and also, could we get more results for people in the six weeks? So yes, absolutely. The part of me that wants to help more is always tweaking and refining. And the reason we can do this is because as people go through the program, we're tracking your, your fear and anxiety levels every day. We have numerical data. So we know how effective our program is. We can see maybe where it can be improved. We also are seeing people's experience and we're always optimizing and improving it. That's why what we do is so much better. People will say, oh, what's the fancy thing you do? It's not fancy. It's just good old fashioned science and improvement and optimization because that's how you help people you always want to make it better i agree with that and I, i'm glad you're you're still trying to like continually improve off the process and try and find better ways and i mean correct me if i'm wrong but it sounds like you still have like the base right and kind of the foundations and the, uh, that you build on right and then from there you kind of maybe poke at this maybe uh, idea for a little bit with one client. It's like, oh, maybe that didn't work as well as I wanted. Then you kind of pull back, try something else. Is that kind of maybe how you look at it? So yes and no. I get why you're asking that. And your question, and you don't know this, but it has a basic confusion about anxiety in your question. You were saying, oh, with this person, do you would do a little bit more, a little bit less? And that, that approach makes sense if you're using a standard psychological model. So what does that mean? If you're doing psychology and therapy, yeah, you kind of like maybe give them more of this therapy or less of that therapy or maybe more of this or maybe more of that. The reason we were able to figure this out is because I looked at the mental health community and it's basically psychology and therapy. And I said, psychology and therapy has value. It gives you insights and tips and tools, but it's you, it's usually theory. Like, Hey, here's why mm -hmm. you're anxious. You're anxious because you think about the future a lot, or you have unresolved trauma from the past, or you're always, uh, you're not on the present moment. It's, it's theories on what's going on concepts. Now there might be truth to it, but it, it's, it's theory. Okay. Gotcha. And theory is okay. If you want like a map, an understanding but if you, if you want to solve something, you can't just have a, an idea. You need an idea that's not psychological. What you need is an idea and an approach that's mechanical. When you understand something mechanically, meaning this connects to this, mm -hmm. this connects to that. When you wiggle this, this moves over here. That's a mechanical understanding. When I hurt my knee, when I was 25, I was trying to impress a girl with some dance moves and I, I thought I could flip off a wall. I saw somebody flip off a wall in a, in a, in a video and thought, well, I'll try to flip off a wall. <laughs> I got halfway up the wall. I tried to flip off the wall, realized I could not flip off a wall, but I was way up in the air. And, and when I landed, I had that cool sort of Spider-Man kind of like superhero, like -da! I had the cool look, but I felt my entire knee explode. Oh, I didn't let her know. I kept my game face. We ended up dating. She was wonderful, but I, my knee was in excruciating pain. So I go to a knee doctor. The knee doctor does an MRI on my knee, shows me, Daniel, your ACL ligament is torn. That's a mechanical understanding. I said, great. What do we do? He said, we, we replace it with another ligament. I went, great. I had an operation. He mechanically replaced the, the broken ligament with another ligament. My knee has been fine for the last 25 years. Do you see how yes, okay. he didn't turn to my knee and say, your knee has a poor mindset. Your knee is feeling disempowered. You, you didn't love your knee. It was a mechanical understanding, which leads to a mechanical solution. You see the difference? No, I, I definitely follow that. and it, it makes sense. So how do you do that with the mind then? How do you do that with like the mind? Well, let me answer your question though. But your first question, which was, you know, when you're working with people, um, you know, do you do a little more, a little bit less? That would be a great question if you're using psychology and therapy. But if your approach is mechanical, it's much more straightforward. Like if you're choking. Yeah. Okay. If you're choking, 
a psychological approach would be, oh, Josh, you're, you know, you're really focused on your lack of air right now. And you have a real scarcity mindset around breathing. And maybe you need to have a more abundant feeling about the air in the world. And maybe can you see that your childhood, you, you, you were, you, you know, you were nervous at the dinner table and you ate food too quickly. And that's why you're t- like, that's a psychological approach. Okay. Mechanical is I'm going to apply pressure to your stomach that puts mechanical pressure behind the blockage, which is going to bl- pop it out and you can breathe again. That's a mechanical approach. Can you see that you don't need to do a little bit more, a little bit less? No mechanics. It just, the same thing works on almost every person. That's how we get a 90% success rate because our approach isn't spiritual or theoretical. It's mechanical. And when something's mechanical, the same thing works on every person. When you break your bone and they put a cast on it, that works for everybody. It's just everybody. So it's a more focus on the body rather than like kind of what you're saying uh, psychologically. Is that kind of what your process looks like then is more focus on that than the, the mind? Is that kind of mixed? So yeah, what you just said is very important and it explains why we were able to solve this when other people haven't solved it. So the short answer is yes, we're focused on the body. But that is a big deal. Why is it a big deal? Well, for people that have fear and anxiety, if you have fear and anxiety and you go to a therapist or a psychologist or you download an app or you go to a guru or you meditate, you're going to be told usually that this is a problem of the mind. You know, they tell you not to not to worry about your intrusive thoughts. Don't think so much about the future. uh, Be more in the present. They give us pills to target neurotransmitters in our brain. You know, it's called mental health. It's got the word mental right in there. So people go to try and solve this at the mind level. I tried to solve it at the mind level. And after 10 years, I still had it. And so I turned to my team and I said, man, we got to help people more. Is this whole anxiety is a problem in the mind theory. Is this getting the job done? I mean, it's what the experts say, but we weren't experts, so we could kind of challenge it. And I said, maybe we need to start over because this isn't, is it a problem of the mind? And we started looking and saying, maybe it's not a problem of the mind. And what we saw very clearly from paying a lot lot of attention is anxiety is not a problem of the mind. And the reason we could see that is because we were open to solving this. Anxiety is not a problem of the mind. When you have anxiety or fear, Do you say, I think anxious or I feel anxious? It's true. You say, I feel anxious. I feel anxious. And where do you feel it? Well, you might, your throat can tighten up. Your chest can tighten up. Your heart rate can go up. Your stomach can get that queasy feeling. So for a hundred years, the experts tell us it's a problem of the mind and they're not solving it. But listen to those words, chest, heart, throat, stomach. Does that sound like the mind to you or the body? Sure. That sure sounds like the body. I'll tell you that. (laughs) It sure sounds like the body and you're smiling. Why are you smiling? Because I mean, just it clicked in my mind, right? Like, and also I would say that, uh, and what clicked in your mind? Just like that, like anytime, like maybe you fear, feel any type of fear. I don't know for me, especially, right. It's, your stomach will like maybe tighten up and be like, Ooh, right. And muscles tense up. And I don't know. I just kind of reminded myself is kind of the reason why I smile. <laughs> well, I'm going to assume something. You tell me if I'm wrong. Usually when people hear that, like, Oh yeah, it's from the mind. There's a little bit of a smile. Of like, Oh, that makes so much sense. You know, oh, it's so simple. Yeah. There, yeah. That too. Yeah. And it is simple. But the fact that it's simple. Now, I just want to be clear here. This is not a theory. I don't have a theory that anxiety is a problem in the mind. When we saw that it wasn't the mind, it was in the body. We started to develop our process based around just the body. And we started running data and and tests and working with test cases. And we saw something very distinct. That the fear and anxiety levels of myself and the other test cases started to go down, but stay down. That's the key thing. Stay down which meant that we were in the right place. We were in the actual right root cause location. Now, not only is that incredible because that's where it's actually coming from, which is why we're able to help people because we're in the right place. But a hundred years, the therapists have been sending everybody to the wrong place. 
Mm. And it's been confusing everybody. Everyone's up in the mind trying to solve this in the mind and they never had a chance. The mind is a symptom of the body, but it's not the cause of the fear. If you feel fear in the body, have you ever noticed that when you feel some fear, anxiety in the body, your mind tends to notice more of the scary problems in your life? But then when you feel a bit calmer, usually your mind tends to notice more good things. Have you noticed that? Oh, a hundred percent. Right. Like, yeah, exactly what you just said there. Right. And that clearly and simply proves that the body doesn't follow the mind. That's what the experts tell you. Oh, your mind is spinning and saying scary things. And that's why you feel anxiety. Well, if it was true, great, but it's not true. And even just looking at our own lives, you feel in your body first and your mind follows. That's the way we're wired to stay alive. You feel hunger in the body first, and then the mind is a tool to get the body what it needs. So you feel hunger in the body first, and then the mind is a tool to get the body what it needs. So if your body feels fear, your mind thinks there's a threat or a problem and starts spinning looking for the problem, which just makes you more afraid. I've actually, I mean, this just reminded me of something. I, I've heard the thing where there's like a difference between like the brain and the mind. Like the brain is physically a part of us and that's where we get like, like, I don't know what the right word is, but like, that's where we feel, right? When we feel like tightness in our chest or we feel, you know, happy, you feel like kind of what you were saying when we feel hungry. And then the mind is kind of maybe the, uh, the connections everywhere that like kind of be what you were saying. Uh, oh, I'm hungry, right? We feel that first brain sends signal and then right goes back up and then it's your mind says, all right, what are we going to do about that? And I don't know. Am I kind of hitting that uh, understanding what you're saying? Well, I think what you're saying, and I'm not sure, but the, the, the takeaway is that yes, we have scary, anxious thoughts and the experts have told everyone, oh, that's the cause. And it's not the cause. It's a symptom. And the reason that matters is because people are paying all this money to just manage symptoms. That's why it hasn't solved it, because they're just trying to manage symptoms. Unless you calm the body, which is what we figured out how to do, the mind will always just start spinning. That's why people can't get rid of this, because the experts sent everyone to the wrong location. And so if you're listening to this, I want to tell you something. You've probably been trying to solve it at the mind level. And because that's just a symptom, you were never going to be able to solve it. But then what happens is what I did is when I couldn't solve it, I started to blame myself. And I would think there's something wrong with me. Why is my mind like this? I'm going crazy. I'm weak. I shouldn't have these thoughts. And I want to let your audience know this is not your fault that you couldn't solve it. And it's not your fault that your mind keeps spinning. The experts confused you. They were well-intentioned, but they had an incomplete understanding of the problem and they sent you to the wrong location. That's why you still have this. You don't even have an anxiety problem. You have a location problem. Mm. So one, I don't want you to blame yourself. This is not your fault. This was the expert's fault. But also, I hope this gives your listeners hope because I hope you can understand if you go from the wrong location of the problem to the actual right location of the problem. Can you see it's probably a lot more likely that we figured this out? Yeah, uh, hands down, right? I, I agree with you. And here's why this matters. Yes, this is information. And if your li audience is listening going, oh, that's interesting. Oh, Daniel's right. You know, I feel it in my body and you're right. The mind follows the body. It's information. But it's what the information means, Josh. That information, because it's true and based in the science, let us to a process that actually just solves this because we're in the right place. And so I'm not here to teach people. It's nice to teach, but I, I, I want people free of this man because I know the pain of chasing symptoms your whole life. It's horrible. You feel broken and trapped. And when you're in the actual right place, what it allows you to do is be free. And that's what I want for people. That's what I have. I have full emotional freedom. I don't feel fear or anxiety anymore. I'm free, which leaves me to be confident, open-hearted, authentic, do what I love. Not sometimes, all the time. And that's what, that's what we want for our clients. It's not about lowering anxiety. That's like, nah, we want people free so that they can be 
that happiest, best version of themselves. And that's possible, not because we're gurus or magical, because we just went to the right effing place. I like that. And I mean, that message right there, I mean, kind of how you start it gives people, right, kind of a sense of hope. And so this is kind of going to be my final question. What does this process kind of look like for each person? So like, what is it that you actually do to kind of help solve and, you know, help them be free? Well, of course, that's what you want to know. Like, what does it look like? And my goal is to get people help. And the reason that what we do is effective, it's no one thing. It's a system. It's a system of multiple tools, a formula that we've optimized to work synergistically together. And part of why they work so well is because it's a specific set of steps in a specific order and sequence and timing. That's kind of the special sauce. Not like, oh, if I could just tell you, oh, go do this, I would. But that would be like if, I don't know, you know, you needed a root canal. And I said, oh, you just need to like get out the infected root. I mean, you can't do much with that because that's not so simple. So no one thing is going to do this. What I can share with you, and also just as a point, that's another reason that your audience, if they have fear and anxiety and panic attacks, haven't solved this. No one individual tool or technique could have solved this. When the body becomes unhealthy, whether it's a knee, a root canal, heart attack, it's not one thing. You know, if you need a root canal fixed, well, there's anesthesia. Then they have to open up the tooth. Then they have to get the root out. Then they got to, it's a whole set of, it's a system of understanding to repair something and individual tools that work together. It's not one thing. Okay. And we found that that's what was necessary to turn this around. So that's why also why everyone fails. They get one tip or one tool or technique. They don't get any instructions. Just like here, do this thing. Okay. And they, they don't know how, in what order, how much to do it or how little. So many of the years that we did was spent laying out the steps, seeing out how, you know, what order do you do them in what sequence and what repetition? That's what gets the results. But I can give you, I can give you an experience like a mini experience of what we're doing. It takes about seven minutes. Do we have that kind of time? Yeah, we can do that for sure. Okay. So again, our approach is not spiritual or psychological. It's mechanical. When you want to solve something, you want a mechanical understanding. It's not that spirituality doesn't have a place. It's not that religion doesn't have a place. That can give you strength and faith. But if you want to lose 50 pounds, you have to mechanically burn the calories more than you eat. And then there's a process in your body that'll burn. Okay. God won't help you lose weight. God will help give you the strength to maybe change your diet and go to the gym, but there's still a mechanical portion to losing weight and gaining muscle. You just, you see the point? Yeah. You have to put the work in. Yeah. So I'm not dismissing religion or spirituality. It has its place. It's just, you got to do the mechanical part. Just like if you're choking, you can pray to God all you want, but if someone can do the Heimlich maneuver, you know, take it, just take it. And maybe that was God sending them. So I'll give you an understanding that anxiety and fear is not psychological, spiritual. It's mechanical. Okay. Here's inner mechanics. Lesson number one. You ready? Yeah, for sure. Anxiety is a symptom. It's a symptom of not feeling safe. Can you see that if you don't feel safe from within, you're going to probably feel afraid. It's true. Yeah. And now we'll name that fear feeling, fear, worry, concern, insecure, anxious, panic attack. It's just different names of different severities of fear, which are just different symptoms of not feeling safe. Does that make sense? Yes. No, that makes sense. So, when we have fear and anxiety, you don't have anxiety. You don't have panic attacks. Those are symptoms because within yourself, you don't feel safe. So you don't have an anxiety problem or a fear problem or a panic attack problem. You have a safety problem. So like on an emotional level, you wouldn't, you wouldn't feel safe. 
This is kind of what you're saying. You want to feel safe. Okay. Make sense? You know, that makes, yeah, that makes sense. Right. So just mechanically, what's underneath the anxiety is not feeling safe. Our program saw this and we have a process so such that you wake up every morning and you feel safe. You don't get rid of anxiety. You wake up feeling safe. I wake up every morning, every day. I don't have to meditate, exercise, do mantras, nothing. I don't have to lick a psychedelic frog. I don't have to do anything. I wake up and I just feel safe. Can you see that if you woke up every morning and no matter what was going on in the outside world, you just felt safe. Can you see that your life would be better? Yeah, to a degree, for sure. The benefit of feeling safe is not only does your symptom of anxiety and panic attack go away, but you feel confident, you're more open-hearted, you're more present. Many of the things that people want become automatic when you just feel safe. So then the question becomes, why do we feel unsafe and how do we feel safe? So again, I can't, you know, take you through an entire six week process with multiple tools, but I'll give you a mini experiential version. Okay. So we'll do a little interactive exercise. Um, and I'm going to, Say it to you, Josh, but when I say the word you, I'm talking to you, Josh, but also Listeners. people who are listening at home. Okay. Okay. So in this role play, we're going to be friends. Okay. I feel like we're, we're, we're friends we're already, already, but in this role, we're already <laughs> friends. Okay. But we're, we're, we're friends for a while. Now, let's just say for many years, I was a good friend to you. I was, I cared about you. I was considerate of you. I made you a priority when you were in trouble. Um, I was always there for you. You could always lean on me and tell me how you feel and what you needed. Can you see that if I treated you that way, you'd feel safe around me? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So now let's say for some unbeknown reason, all of a sudden I stop doing all that and I start being unkind to you. I'm not there for you. I don't listen to you when you need me. I'm not there for you. I put everybody else ahead of you. When you ask for help, I go, I don't care. When you tell me I'm hurting you, I tell you, I don't care. And I make you feel like you're on your own and you can't rely on me. Would that leave you feeling safe and calm or unsafe and anxious? My initial thought was scared, right? Like, it's like, oh shoot. Like, did I do something? Do I need to do something different? That was my first reaction. Well, it's a good reaction, but you answered the question scared. Mm -hmm. That's code for unsafe. There you go. Okay. So now on the count of three, I want you, and by you, I mean you, Josh, and your audience. On the count of three, I want you to say to me, the way you're treating me leaves me feeling unsafe. On the count of three. Right. Okay. One, two, three. The way you're f treating me is making me feel unsafe. Why are you telling me this? I don't care, man. And for also, what is wrong with you? Everything is fine and you shouldn't be freaking out like this. You're going crazy. And also you're bothering me. I'm trying to get stuff done and be happy. And then you're just bringing all this drama and illogical weirdness to me. There's something wrong with you and get it away. I don't want to know how you feel. You're on your own. Oof. <laughs> yeah. Would that leave you feeling safe and calm or unsafe and more anxious? Probably more a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or even I would say I, sometimes I can be a little chirpy. I might chirp right back at them. Right. And maybe yeah. they wouldn't be benefit anyone. No, it wouldn't. But what I'm trying to show is that there's an almost automatic, reflexive, mechanical response to that type of behavior. If I treat you that way, the any human being is most likely going to mechanically react and feel unsafe. It's mechanics. It's not theory. It's not. A, it's like mechanical. If I do this, you're going to feel that way. Now, the cool thing about mechanics is if you know the mechanics of how to move something in one direction you know the mechanics of how to move it in the other direction. For instance, if you understand physical health, if you know how to help somebody lose weight to burn more calories than they eat, you also know how to help somebody gain weight. Because mm. it's the same mechanics. Make sense? Yes. No, that makes, that makes a lot of sense, especially that analogy you gave there. Yeah. So 
what I just did made you feel unsafe and it's based in mechanics, but because I understand mechanics, I should be able to then make you feel safe. So on the count of three, let's see if I'm right on the count of three, same thing, both to you, Josh. And if you're listening to this, say, Hey, the way you're treating me leaves me feeling unsafe on the count of three, one, two, three. The way you're treating me is making me feel unsafe. Thank you so much for telling me. I am so sorry. How you feel makes a lot of sense given how I treated you. You're not anxious. This is just anyone would feel this way. I was horrible to you. Of course you feel, you don't trust me. You don't feel good around me. I feel horrible and I want to treat you better to earn your trust back so that you feel good around me. And that'll take time for me to rebuild that trust. But in the meantime, I'm glad you told me. It makes sense that you feel this way and I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Does that leave you feeling mechanically safe and calm or unsafe and anxious? Definitely, definitely a little more calm, right? Yeah. I wasn't ready to like pounce right back, right? Yeah. And the word definitely means like, yeah, simple, mechanical, like of course. So what, again, what I'm trying to share with you is that there are things that you, that happen that will mechanically make a person feel unsafe and safe. Now in this interaction, our relationship is a friend relationship, but on some level we're in a relationship with ourselves. And can you see that if in the friend relationship, I treated you poorly, you felt unsafe. Can you see on some level, sometimes you're not very loving and a good friend to yourself? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. So if me being a poor friend to you mechanically makes you feel unsafe, can you see that you being a poor friend to you could mechanically leave you feeling unsafe? Oh, a hundred percent for sure. I think, right. This, that type of relationship similar, if not more like in some cases that should be kind of one of your first priorities. Absolutely. Because it's you to you. You're the one person that's supposed to be there for you. And when you're treating yourself poorly, trust me, I know. Now, when I say this, it makes so much sense. Like, oh yeah, maybe I'm treating myself poorly and maybe that leaves me feeling unsafe from within. It just makes logical, mechanical sense. But the experts are like, no, you have a brain disorder. It's a problem of the mind. It's not. What our data and research showed was that there's 10 to 30 things a day that's coming both from the outside world, but also from our own internal world that we don't even know we're doing. We're just doing it unconsciously. And over time, it leaves basically our nervous system feeling unsafe from within. That's why we feel unsafe. And then the outside world can push on you and create a little bit of pressure and stress, the unknown finances, what people think of you. But because you feel unsafe from within, that outside stuff affects you so much more because you don't feel safe and solid from within. And I know that because when we developed our process so that we, I could just feel safe and solid from within, I feel safe and solid. So now the outside world can push on me. The world, people cannot like me. I don't like it, but I feel safe and solid. It doesn't affect me. And the beauty of that is, well, especially for our teens, we see our, our young people, you know, bullying and social media and, Parents come to me all the time and they're like, not only am I anxious, but I can see my child is anxious and I don't know what to do. And I said, this happened a month ago. A client came to us actually from your state of Utah and said, like, I have this, not only am I anxious, but my child is anxious. And I know I'm passing it on and I don't know what to do. And it's breaking my heart. And I said, I'm going to show you in this program what you can do every day. So that you can feel safe and you'll be modeling that behavior and your teenager will see it. And I've seen this before. They'll start to feel safer. And she said that if you could do that, I mean, that would be a miracle. And she reached out to us, I think week five of our program. And she said, I just want to thank you so much. And I said, what is your, is your anxiety gone? She said, it's not gone. It's down by about 70%. But more importantly, I'm saying thank you because my teen came home from high school and I asked them how did school go? And my teenager said, well, I got bullied today, but I don't know. It just didn't bother me that much. And what? Our client asked the teenager, like, what happened? And the teenager said, well, I didn't like it, but I've been doing what you've been doing at home. I did it to myself. So when I got bullied, it just didn't bother me as much. That sounds great. <laughs> 
we want to help. And when we help people, we're not just helping people, we're helping the people that are around them. When we help people feel safe, their children are safe, but also when people feel safer, they're the best, most loving versions of themselves. That's why we're doing this. But what I want to explain to you about the mechanics is the downside is nobody has approached fear and anxiety mechanically. It's been spiritual, psychological, personal development. There's value in it, but it's not going to solve it. And it also makes it very complicated. When things are mechanical, they're very simple. If you're choking, to not choke is very simple. So the downside is people don't have a simple approach to fear and anxiety. Not only are they not solving it, but they feel more confused and more complicated and like they get pulled, which just makes you more anxious. But can you see that if fear and anxiety is actually a mechanical issue, can you see that maybe not only is a solution possible, but that it could even be simple? Oh, yeah. I actually think simplicity rules, right? Like if, I mean, complexity has its place, but if, if you can make things simple, then like, why would you, why would you not? <laughs> it's kind of yep. my thought, but yeah. So thank you. Thank you for sharing this. So if people want to like engage with your program and, you know, connect with you and, you know, try this out and see the improvements you've kind of been sharing today. What's the best way they can do that? Well, I like things simple. So my <laughs> name's Daniel Packard. You just go to danielpackard.com and there you can learn more about our program. You can see testimonials of the people we've helped that used to be terrified and now feel safe and happy and free. Um, you can see grandmas and mothers and husbands and kids just living confident, happy, free lives. And it's, I know your audience is skeptical this is possible, so please go look at the people we're helping. Um, there's also kind of a frequently asked questions section. Uh, there's also a dance video of me. I, I, was, I don't know where I learned it, but I'm a pretty good little dancer, and there's a dance video that's it's pretty unsurprisingly. Sweet. Yeah. I saw that. <laughs> but I'll, I'll tell you, I don't dance very often, and the dance footage is from this competition – and I got pulled into this dance competition. I thought, okay, I'll, I'll enter the dance competition. But I get away half. I get about halfway through the dance competition because I don't dance. I was exhausted. I was hyperventilating. I could barely breathe. But I was so hopped up on adrenaline and like the juices of being on stage that I just kept going. But if you look, you can see this look of fear of like I can't breathe, but I'm gonna I'm gonna stick the landing anyway. Um, and if you like what you hear, and also you can learn about what we call our no change, no charge guarantee. And what that means is. When you work with us, you, you don't pay at the beginning because we haven't, we haven't earned your money. You only pay at the end once you have clear, measurable results that your anxiety and fear is either completely gone or almost completely gone. And also you can get the price of the program, which trust me is way, 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 way less and it's worth, I mean, if you can feel free of this, it's like a million dollar gift. That's what we get told. And it's, we don't charge that because we don't want money to get in the way of people's happiness. And if you can't afford the program at its current price, just know we have payment plans where you choose the amount because we know times are tough. And also we have scholarships where we'll just give the program away for free. We, we just see how many people are in pain we see not only are they, they're in pain, but they don't have a solution, Josh. That's, and they don't have a simple solution that's effective. And it's wrong. That's what people need, and that's what we're passionate about. And if you don't have the money, we don't care. We want, to, we want, this, we want people to be happy and free. And so if you can't afford it, let us know, and we'll try to work something out for you. So again, danielpacker.com. Uh, find out about the program. Um, get the price, watch the testimony. You'll see the dance moves. And if you're interested, uh, there's a link to book a free 15 minute call with me. And you know, you'll tell me about your life and what you're struggling with. I'll give you some insights and tips, and then I'll show you how we can help you. If we can help you great. Um, if not, that's okay too. We're not here to pressure anybody. You're already anxious enough. We're not going to do a high pressure sale, but also we want people who really want to do this. So we're not there to pressure. So yeah, check it out. If you're curious, if we can help you book a free call with me and, uh, and that's it. Danielpacker.com. Awesome. Well, thank you, Daniel. Thank you for sharing that. And I, I love the approach of simplicity 
And yeah, just thank you for the knowledge and wisdom you shared with us. Absolutely. My honor. Thank you for having me. All right, everyone, as you can tell, that was Daniel Packard. He's a very intelligent person, has great things to share. I challenge you guys, if anything spoke to you, to reach out to him. I know that he wants to help you. And if any of the problems that he shared, or if you liked what he said, reach out to him. He wants to help. And I know he wants to help. We talked about it afterwards. Stay tuned till next week. We have a great guest lined up for you guys. See you guys next week. And let's get after it. Hey everyone, if you liked this episode and would like to hear more, be sure to hit that subscribe or follow button. We release a new episode every Wednesday for you guys to listen to. Thank you guys so much for the support that you give. We could not have done this without you guys. If you would like to be a potential guest on the show, check out intelligentconvos.com and fill out the form there. Thank you guys again, and let's get after it.